you won't notice democracy ending. The USSR still had grocery stores. Nazi Germany had rent. Italy still had a shitty train network filled with people who could be fired for being late to work. There will still be the same police officers enforcing law, the same branches of government running the jail, and many of the same laws pay for food or jail. Dictatorships don't require larger jail populations. In the later 1900s, the U.S. had far more prisoners per capita than the USSR. Elections didn't stop the U.S. from having concentration camps, doing eugenics, or having a secret police. The FBI were well known for killing political opponents like Malcolm X. We have more surveillance than ever before. You are on YouTube. Spain wants to ban end-to-end -end encryption. And we have massive DNA databases that fascists use to target Jewish people and police regularly access. Dictatorships don't seize control of all businesses. Hitler privatized much of the government. Although most property taken from Jewish people during the Holocaust has not been returned and continues to make profit for those who took it. Even if the Nazis in power are gone, the ones down the street in democratic Germany have more resources and so more power to exert and free time to use it. They might still claim they have democracy. Look at North Korea, also known as the Democratic Republic of Korea. What people associate democracy with is a constant progress. Not whether or not these systems exist, but whether or not the degree of oppression increases or decreases over time. But history is not linear. What determines this degree with dictatorships is the threat of revolution. Politicians that grab more power push out those that grab less, eventually leaving only those that go as far as possible without causing revolution. This includes dictatorships of the majority. Society is far more than whatever singular system claims to be dominant. It is many different groups clashing and working together. We have trans people working to get each other hormones in queer mutual aid networks, as well as fascists working in their own groups to dox us. My relationship to these networks determine whether or not I get hormones, and what resources they have determine whether all my friends get to eat any given night, and how many masks we hand out can impact how many immunocompromised people are killed. These systems need focus. Putting all your energy into influencing the dominant systems is abandoning us. Dead is dead, democracy or not. Our groups are also the ones that provide that resistance to dictatorships. Abandoning us to protect democracy is exactly the wrong move. To put it simply, your ballot won't save me. And if you think you can convince me to give up my life for it, you are wasting your time. People putting democracy above everything else is not surprising. There is propaganda and coercion. To organize outside of it, you must either only harm, like with capitalism, or be attacked by the state, like with mutual aid. Propaganda says unofficial is synonymous with harmful, so to most, all progress must be from democracy. This is the idea we want to work against. People who believe this won't ever fight for us. They won't notice democracy ending, so there will be no clear point for them to riot. You would only resist then if you are already resisting now. If you need somewhere to start, go and follow accounts that focus on elections, then follow those that talk about directly building accessibility and getting people food. Many will have suggestions on how to get more involved over time yourself, I know my other videos do. The main difference you will notice is that while convincing others to join in is essential to mutual aid, what matters is how much you put into it, how much we care in total, not how many bodies you can get lukewarm verbal confirmation from. It is about doing things. I suggest looking into mutual aid orgs and anarchist texts on democracy. I will put links to both in the comments.